Thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, glad to be here. I'm uh, the CEO of Flybits. Uh, we, are, we have been a participant at Finnovate for the past years. And uh, some of you may have seen the demo of our platform yesterday. And today, I decided to focus more on some of the underlying technologies and IPs that we are working on and really emphasize on the role of data when you're building a sustainable and scalable AI strategy. We are helping about 22 large banks around the world with their data strategy, helping them to build data ecosystems, and really helping them and educating them that there is no such one thing as AI. Even under the subset of machine learning, there are about 50 different ways that you can do machine learning. There are techniques for risk assessment. There are techniques for optimization and upselling. So when you're a bank, Sometimes it may be difficult to figure out, well, how to route these types of inference capabilities to the right node or to the right um, capabilities in your technology infrastructure. When you look at the consumer sector, you can see that channels are becoming more predictive and context aware. Look at Siri on Apple. Look at Google Assistant. Uh, look at Alexa. The question for a bank is, well, how do I make my digital channels predictive and context aware? Am I going to hire tens or hundreds of data scientists and hoping that they're going to commercialize a lot of their activities and in an expedited fashion and bring it to the market? Or I can benefit from a platform that hides the complexity of data unification, aggregation, synthesis, modeling, and instead of over-relying on the IT department, I can now go empower the creative units or the marketing units of the bank to bring these predictive capabilities to the market. You have probably seen the demo of the platform yesterday, but now I want to have a different lens in terms of what we have learned so far when we work with some of our customers. When I look at the data infrastructure of a bank, usually it looks something like this. If you bring a new CRM, if you bring a new platform, you need to go and tune all sort of other gauges to make sure everything works well, especially if the bank has a lot of legacy systems, is in the process of procuring a lot of monolithic platforms. So if that process continues, it's going to be extremely difficult to scale and sustain an AI strategy. But some of you who are coming from the technology background, you may have heard about this notion of microservices and containers. That's a very good analogy to look at when you're building a data strategy for the bank. Think about a shipping company, Maersk, for example. Yes, you're going to do all your security checks to make sure what's in the container, but the containers all look the same. You can ship furniture, you can ship a piano, you can ship grains you can stack them exactly the same way, and that will really facilitate how you move these containers across the ocean. It's exactly the same analogy for the right data strategy in a bank. So a lot of the work that we do at Flybits, we empower our uh, customers to bring their mainframe data, CRM data, sensory data, Excel sheets, CSV files, and giving them a very unified way to really create these customer logics. The notion of cross-border marketing and really building these marketplaces, it has been around for many, many years. The problem to date is, well, if a bank is going to partner with a card issuer, with a grocery store, with an energy company, the last question will be great use cases, but that's my data. And I'm not going to give up my data. Why should I? When I was uh, in grad school, my view on data to my professor was, OK, professor, give me the data, and I will do my assignment. Unfortunately, that's the mindset of majority of the analytics team that we work with. Give me the data. When I have the data, I will go and do my work. There are lots of new capabilities now coming to the market that allow the data to be shared in encrypted state in tokenized state, and still you will be able to use those models uh, to predict, to cluster, and to associate. And that's what we have done so far at Flybits. We have empowered banks to go partner with energy companies, telecom operators, grocery stores, and the banking channel become that unified gateway for the end user bringing all of these services together. But if you look at the under the hood, 
No one is giving up their data. The edge of the cloud will compute the correlation and association between the data sets, but the identifiable data will go back to the network. Let me share some examples with you. These are screenshots from uh, our, um, our, our uh, Experience Studio platform. If you look at the right, we have this ability to turn any type of data stream into a context plugin. The context plugins can come from sensors, location, bandwidth, battery power. It can come from a transaction stream. But we have also empowered the banks to go and partner with startups, with fintechs, with travel companies. And exactly the same way, these entities will expose their data to our platform, and the marketing units or the digital channel units of the bank can now combine these use cases together. Let's share an example with you. One of the deployments we have, the bank has a partnership with a real estate uh, tool. We can recognize if a person is starting to look for a property. We can immediately go get their credit score and other data sets that the bank has about that customer. And at the right time, the bank can engage with the customer and then give them a pre-approved mortgage offer at the right time on the right channel. We understand based on propensity models, should we deliver this at night? Should we deliver this in the morning? Should we deliver this when the person is traveling? And we do all of that while the privacy of the customer is protected. That's a very important factor when you're building personalization strategies like this. Another example that I can share with you, um, you can tie all of your PFM data to our engine. Uh, most banks have already a PFM strategy. You can tie it back to location. You can tie it back to travel patterns. And then you can address the needs of your customers, let's say, when they are at an airport. MasterCard is one of our key investors and partners, and you're doing some very interesting work with them on a global basis to help their uh, global business travelers. The other thing that I wanted to share with you is that we have also built tools to educate banks how to use AI correctly. If you look at a bank, probably there are not going to be more than three kind of things that you want to do with AI. You want to associate products with customers. You want to cluster and segment your customers into groups or your products. Or you want to predict things such as purchase patterns. So these three key things, these three key strategies, require very different AI capabilities. So when companies go and procure multi-million dollar AI capabilities that is based on one type of machine learning, our sniff test, this is not going to be sustainable and scalable. So what we have done part of our patent is also we have created this orchestrator of models that enable the banks to empower their analytics units, enable them to go and partner with other AI providers. And based on the context of decision making, we can recommend models that are relevant for that particular situation. For example, if I want to give a credit card to a first year university student, risk is a very important context. Our system understands that. And although we have not built that model, we know how to go and fetch that model and empower the digital channel units of the bank to use it in their experience design. Same thing with purchase prediction. Same thing for fraud assessment. And this thing that we call it the Flybits inference router really empowers banks not just to scale their data strategy, but also enable them to procure AI as new capabilities become available. The state of AI at the moment, no matter how much we brag about it, is animal instinct. Give me a lot of data. I'm going to do a lot of try and error, especially if you're in the unsupervised uh, learning setting. And then I'll try to figure it out. A lot of ca capabilities around AI will be invented in the future. Cognitive models, they require less data, less training time. As an infrastructure owner of a bank, how do you prepare your bank to be able to plug them in as they become available? If you go and procure these very monolithic, non-scalable capabilities, the cost of scaling will be extremely high. So what we do at Flybits, we will help you to orchestrate all of that data. 
without seeing any identifiable data information. We actually do not believe in this notion of data lakes. We think if you co-locate the data, no matter what you do, you will make it prone to security risks. So one of the key capabilities that we created, it actually allows you to orchestrate the data in an orchestrator, ask questions from the data rather than moving the data over, and when you get the answer, move the data back in their respective repositories. For those of you from Europe, this is something that resonates a lot with CIOs of European banks because it addresses GDPR in a very perfect way. Even if you go on a centralized model, naturally the data will be tokenized, will be encrypted, it follows a hybrid cloud. Your premise could be on-prem or cloud-based, but we don't see any of your data. When a company or a fintech comes to me and say, give me all your data, I will come back in three months and I'll show you insights. And by the way, you have new data stream. That's going to be a new project for you. That's a very nice consulting gig. It's not an AI product. So with these capabilities, we want to empower banks to really build a solid, scalable, and sustainable uh, AI strategy. Then we empower that with our Experience Studio platform that is a visual interface. You don't need to do any coding with that. You can inject models. You can inject data. You can tie it back to an intervention, such as a push notification, a UI layout, a chatbot, and then deliver it to the market, either on a channel or integrate with an existing system, such as a CRM or any other platform that we have. Things that you can do with these capabilities, just to share some examples with you. Uh, we have a team in San Francisco that does, does a lot of agent-based modeling with these. We understand the spending patterns of a customer, and we correlate it with their travel patterns. We bring all of that data together, and then we can have insights that the person who tends to do this type of a shopping on a Saturday in this mall tends to have this type of an investment propensity. In order to achieve these things, you need to think about building it through an enabling platform, not on the application layer, not on the presentation layer, but having an enabling platform that allows these types of use cases to be built by your creative minds. Another example that I can share with you is with one of our customers who is rethinking wealth banking. They came to us and said, you know what? Affluent millennials, who are our next targets, are not going to pay service fees. They don't like service fees. Can we leverage your capabilities? Can we leverage network effects to create a mentor-mentee relationship between our baby boomers and our high net worths and the affluent millennials who are going to become our next generation customers, introduce them together? So let's say if I want to be a tech entrepreneur, the bank will use context to introduce me to a relevant mentor. And these network effects will be the driver of the new monetization capabilities for the banks. So the reason I show you this is that figuring out your data strategy will really empower you to come up with a lot of new business models that makes your bank relevant and scalable in the future. You can think about also outside a uh, kind of two-dimensional uh, display interface. We are working with digital wallets. At a point of sales, at the tap, we can actually tell you which credit card with which loyalty program makes the most sense for that purchase. Many of us forget about the perks that we have on our credit cards. We have a lot of loyalty programs, a lot of cards. This is a case that we have empowered a mobile wallet with the capabilities that I showed you. Many of you saw the Pepper robot today. It's great. But we have also empowered robots, robots that can actually behave differently based on the context of the customer. This is an example that we bring a robot to our lab. It recognized everyone. It started dancing. We moved it to the food court across the street. It didn't recognize anyone, and it sat down and started crying. So building context around robotics is also very important. It's not just going to be a chat bot or a push notification or a card layout. Building the right data strategy and AI strategy can go across channels, including uh, robotics. So I will wrap up by sharing some of our observations with you. We believe that banks in the future will be assessed on how effectively they can form data ecologies. 
how they can go and become the next-gen recommendation engine for their customers. Not just selling them financial products, but really help them with their lifestyle when they are traveling, when they are buying their first home, when they are thinking about a big decision. We are also seeing that data is shifting verticals. You know, a, a retailer may get into the hospitality in the future. Um, a, an energy company may get into telecom. We think banks can be in a perfect situation to be that trusted hub for these entities. And the last thing I would say is that AI is a very interdisciplinary phenomenon. When I hear that banks created a lab full of AI people, that's the job of a university. Focus more on agile, interdisciplinary teams, bring great AI talent, bring anthropology talent, bring designers, bring UX experts, and really empower these units to focus on a product. And don't forget privacy. Privacy not as an afterthought, but as a design principle in your, in your technology. Thank you again for your time. We have a booth here, and uh, would love to talk to you. Thanks.